KUAM News, brought to you by GTA. We start with you, Subway and Chili's Grill and Bar. The chasm remains deep between supporters and opponents of Speaker Therese Terlahi's bill. Despite efforts to rein in the testimony and keep it at five minutes apiece, the second hearing stretched even longer than the first, with emotions often running high. I filed a complaint with the medical board of medical examiners with Dr. Berg 18 months ago, and it's still sitting on his desk collecting dust. Julie Sanchez lost a husband last week. I'm for this bill 112. I lost my husband because of that. They took him, they called the ambulance without my authority, without my consent. They took him, put him in an ambulance, take him to Guamimoro. Maria Espinoza lost a son. I took care of him for eight years and two months with, my, with only my husband as the after work, self-mandated part-time caregiver until my son passed away one year ago, June 9, 2020. And this is what he looked like after he left the, the hospital. This bill has divided our society. You know that, we all see this. And it's already hurt all of us, all of us. And I'm asking you to stop defending yourself and listen. Just listen. Don't go and look on the media, look at all the, the posts. Listen, right? Doctors aren't saying no, don't do anything. We're saying this isn't the solution, but you attack us. We are in the same team to take care of the patient. So don't write the bill without talking to the medical community because we do care for our patient. There was a noticeable shift from the medical community's complaints about how the bill opens them to more frivolous lawsuits and the chilling effect it would have on their practices to more direct calls for compromise. One alternate solution um, could be convening a screening committee consisting of two or three of our professional licensed board members to determine negligence at the board level instead of leaving it up to a magistrate judge. Zoom technology today allows for an arbitration board to meet in a secure and private and HIPAA compliant fashion with computer technology and obviate the need for airline travel, hotel accommodations, meals, and per diem costs. Even Dr. Thomas Shea, who has been one of the most outspoken critics of the bill, offered up solutions. The poor, you can go ahead and create a funding for them, a funding source, so they're part of money, just like MIP Medicaid, you have part of money they can access to, to help fund the arbitration. Terlahi has said the basic purpose of her bill is to provide justice for malpractice claimants who can't afford the costs of mandatory arbitration. The search for an answer will continue. I don't believe we are permanently divided. It is a temporary divider because we have highlighted perhaps something that we just don't look at or talk about. And that is, there is a disparity. We are already divided when it comes to the ability to pursue certain types of claims. A third public hearing on Bill 112 will be announced, as well as a roundtable on related issues or an oversight hearing. For Guam's News Network, Senator I'm Nestor Lacanto. Just a minute. Two more senators. Yes, Senator Moylan. No question.